This is Augmented Grand Piano from Arturia. Before we delve into how it makes its wonderful sounds, let's just have a quick listen to some of my favourite presets, starting off with this one, Land of Tone. Now you would have seen some of the knobs moving around in the middle of the interface there and they are changing the sound. Later on we'll discover exactly what they are doing to the sound. But first of all, let's listen to something a little bit more traditional. This one is called I Felt It. Now, I wouldn't want to give you the impression that this is a traditional piano plugin. And to prove that, let's have a listen to one of these presets, which is called Piano Plucks. So the question is, how does it go about making this incredible variation of sounds? Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. Now I've made it pretty clear in previous videos that I am a big fan of the Augmented series from Arturia. So I'm so pleased to see that they've now added this Augmented Grand Piano. Now if you agree with me and you also like this instrument, don't forget to check the link in the description down below. Now in order to find out a bit more about how the sounds are generated in this wonderful plugin, let's first of all start off by talking about layers. If we look at the main interface, we can see two pianos. On the left, an amber piano, and on the right, a blue piano. These are described as layers A and layers B in this particular plugin. And we can use this big morph control in the middle to blend the two. Okay, so all the way over to the left, we can hear just layer A, and it sounds like this at the moment. And all the way to the right, we can hear layer B, which sounds like this. Now the morph control can blend them, but it's not just a mix control, it is actually morphing some of the values under the hood which are generating these sounds. Now to see how these sounds are generated, we're going to click on the advanced button here. Now we can see layers A on the left here and layers B on the right, and we can see that each of them is made up of two different sounds. We have this one here which is a sampled sound twine for layered A and it's also got another sampled sound deep resonance here okay on the right we can see that layer B is made up of a synth sound cloned Celesta B and also another one which is called picked pluck now let's switch off uh, both of the sounds which are making up layer B and also one of the sounds which is making up layer A so we've just got one sound here which is the sampled sound twine for layered A now it sounds like this now we can swap that out for another sample if we wish. We can just click on that and we've got a bunch of samples to choose from here in some different categories. So we could do that. And we can also control that sound using some of the controls here. So for example, we could use the ADSR controls, attack, decay, sustain, release to adapt the sound in that way. Give it a very short attack and a long decay. So it's great that we have all of this control over the samples. Of course, we can play around with that and get that sounding just as we want. Let's switch on the second sample here and have a listen to those two together. Now we also have a filter control at the bottom here. I'm not gonna go into detail of this, but you can imagine that we can change the sound with that as well. And 
And you can see that we've also got a filter control on layer B. Let's switch off both those samples now and go over to layer B and switch on one of the synths here, okay? You can see that it's sounding like this or hear that it's sounding like this at the moment. And again, we do have control over the way this sounds. We can also swap it out for some different types of synthesizer sounds as well um, by the menus here. Okay, and the same goes again for uh, the second sound with layer B, which is synth two, which currently is a picked pluck. That's the two together. Okay, now we can switch those on and we can also drag them around. So we could have layer A being made up of a one sample, one synth, for example, by dragging one of the synths over like so, and that swaps it out. So now on layer B, we also have one sample and one synth. So we've got a bit of flexibility there, but this is the essence of how we are making sound within this plugin. The next thing I want to look at is modulation. So there's several different ways that we can modulate different aspects of our sound. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look at this low frequency oscillator we've, we can see working here. We can see that it's assigned to two attributes. Sampler 1, fine, which is the tuning control, and sampler 2, fine, which is also tuning control for that. Now, at the moment, it's set to some fairly sort of low values, so its extremes are not going to be all that extreme. So you won't hear too much in the way of variation in tuning, yeah? But if we change these to a much more extreme value like so, then we can really hear it. Now, of course, we can go ahead and change different aspects of that oscillator as well to change the sound of that, yeah? Now, we'll switch those off because they sound horrible. Um, let's have another look at another way of doing it. We can go to the function controls here. Now, the function control at the moment here is assigned to synth position 2 and filter B cutoff. Let's just go back to our layers and switch off everything except for synth position two you can see the position control here yeah so that's what we're going to be modulating i'm going to go and pick one of the presets here um, let's do this one hopefully we can hear this if i put this to a fairly extreme value yeah, you can hear that uh, modulation happening there in time with what you're seeing on the screen there as well. We've also got some random uh, uh, modulation here as well. And also this one is quite interesting, the keys one. Okay, this is where different aspects of your keyboard or input, input from your keyboard can be assigned to different aspects of the sound. Now, velocity is not assigned to anything here at the moment, so that's not going to make any difference. Um, but aftertouch is. Now, let's just quickly reset our sound so we can actually hear it properly. Now, you can see that aftertouch here is assigned to the vibrato values here, okay? The depth and rate vibrato values. Now, aftertouch is what happens when you sort of press hard on a keyboard after you, after you actually played it, okay? Not all keyboards have um, this ability, mine does. So as I press down harder on the key, you can see this kick in and I can add vibrato to the sound. Yeah, so you can see and hear that happening there. And obviously we've got our modulation wheel, etc., assigned to different attributes as well. So there's lots of different ways that we can actually modulate different aspects of our sound. So another way that we can change our sound is with the arpeggiator. At the moment, if I play a C major triad chord, it sounds like this. Now, if I turn on the arpeggiator, and I've already set up some settings here and play the same chord again, let's have a listen. Now, there's a couple of things which are being arpeggiated here. First of all, the velocity, which is on this row here, and I've made my adjustments here by just dragging these lines around. And the second row is where we can adjust what's called the gate. So basically, this is the length of the note. Now, you can see through the progression here, I've gradually adjusted the length of the note so they'll be longer. Now, with this particular preset, that sort of brings in that more sort of airy sound as the notes are played a little bit longer. So if I play that arpeggio again, you can hear that airiness coming in towards the end of the sequence. So it's nice that we can sort of adjust those two things. 
Now, you can hear at the moment that as I play this, it's starting from the bottom note in the chord and then going up to the top and then going back down to the bottom again. We can change that behavior with the type control down here. So if I flick this over, it will now start on the top note and go down to the bottom. Or if I flick this over again, and we can see that with this type, it will go from the bottom to the top and then work its way down again and then back up again. Okay, so with this one, if I play the same triad, it sounds like this. I better stop there before I get a copyright strike for a famous song. So as I say, we are adjusting both the velocity and the gate here. Now, a nice thing that we can do with both of these control is and is add a random element in there. So if I do this for velocity, I'll go to the random control here and just drag this up. It's like a slider here. And as I drag it up, you'll see those bars around the main lines uh, sort of move. So now as I play my chord, we'll get some variation, some random variation with the velocity, but it will generally kind of follow the same, the rules that I've set for it here with my sequence. So we'll have a listen again. It's nice that we have that control. Now at the moment, it's just playing single notes with every single step, but we can set it up to play the whole chord on particular steps if we want to, just by clicking on the chord button here. I'll just do it very randomly here. I don't know what this is gonna sound like. I'll do it like so. Now let's have a listen. So lots of fun can be had with this arpeggiator here. Now let's move on to some effects. Now this is a kind of a just so you know coverage of the effects section here because I really feel it kind of speaks for itself to be honest with you. But just so you know, layers A and layers B can have two effects applied to each. And you can see that there's various different effects available here and we can change them out for different things and we can control them all here in the way that you would expect to control them, okay? So many different effects to choose from. And also, if we go down to this main tab here, we do have two main effects here as well, delay and reverb. And you could see, if you went back to the front panel, that you could sort of control the level of these effects um, from the front panel here. So as I say, just so you know, there's quite a lot of effects here. Now, if we look at our front page again, as I mentioned a moment ago, we can control the level of our effects here with the four bottom controls we can see here. But we've also got these four controls, the one in the middle and the three at the top here. So the one in the middle being the morph control, we've got the color control, we've got the time control and the motion control. Now, these are a little different. As I mentioned earlier with the morph, it's not just a mixed sort of blending control. It's actually morphing attributes. Now, if we go to the advanced section and we we make sure we're on the macros tab this is where all of that magic actually happens so if we look at this section here which is the morph control we can see that it's assigned to a number of different attributes here yeah so for example it's assigned to the volume level of layer a part one remember each layer is made up of two parts so we've got the volume level for a and b here the same for layers b the volume level for part one and part two here okay now, as we move on, we can see that this morph control is also assigned to sampler to attacks uh, attribute here, yeah? And also synth one's density and a few more aspects of the sound here. So in fact, as we adjust the morph control, it's doing much more than just sort of blending the volumes of things. Now, what we can do with each of these attributes is set, is set their minimum and maximum values, yeah? So that, that's changing the behavior as we move the morph control. And also we can sort of set the curve here as well. I'm just dragging up and down on this little graphic here and you can see the way the curve is changing there. So we get a lot of control over what's happening with each of these sort of individual front panel controls. And just as a, by the way, I've been doing a lot of this in the advanced area here, but if you quickly want to adjust these values as well as doing it here on this macros tab, what's persistent throughout the whole interface are these four controls here right at the bottom. Yeah, color, morph, uh, time and motion so you don't actually have to keep going back to the front panel here to access those you can also access them from the bottom and this is where a lot of the magic 
of this particular plugin actually happens. Now, the two other instruments in the augmented series are augmented strings and augmented voices, and they are also a part of the V collection from Arturia. I've made a video about that, and you can watch it right here. Go on, click on that thumbnail.